Hi, I'm Josh Whiteman with Garage Gurus, and for today's tech tip, we're gonna go over how to use masks to check for intermittent circuit issues with Pico 7. Let's jump over to the laptop and look at how to set it up. For this particular mask, we're checking for an intermittent circuit issue on a cylinder head temp sensor. So right now we have one lead back probed into the PCM and the other lead to ground. You can see it's reading around two volts, which is correct. We're gonna go in and actually look at our masks that you can see right here. From this point, there's a number of ways to do it, but we're gonna right now click generate mask from source. And now it's kind of preset what these boundaries look like. We can adjust the accuracy of this Y axis, but we're gonna to try to maintain a fairly tight tolerance of around 1%. And then with our X axis or our time scale, um, all we really wanna make sure is that the entire screen is covered with this mask. So if we decrease the time too much, you're gonna see it starts to affect some things, especially if we're going percentage, it can get a little crazy. So we're just gonna to wanna to try to create a nice solid mask across the screen. And at this point, we're gonna hit apply and close. Now you can see that this mask has um, transferred over to our normal scope screen. You can leave it like this, uh, and if we hit play, all I'm gonna do is disconnect the battery a couple times, the negative from the battery, and you can see it does pick up when that dropout occurs. Okay. It actually will re-record it as well. And so you can go back and forth between the laptop and wiggling a harness or whatever you need to do, it will record when that waveform dropped into the mask. Uh, but another thing you can do is come in here and we're gonna select an action. We're going to change our event to mask failure and the action we're going to add is play sound. You will have to select a sound. In this case, we're just gonna select a beep and now we can continue through. I'm gonna start it over, so it removes all of those previous failures, and now I'm going to disconnect the probe for just a second here to get it to fail, and at the end of the buffer, it will make that beeping sound. Now that I have my mask set up as well as my action, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the back probe from the PCM so that our signal does cross through that mask barrier. We get the failure and you're gonna be able to hear that beep every time the scope moves over to the next waveform. So as you can see, it beeps at the end of each waveform as long as your channel has broken through that mask that you've set up. It does take a little bit of practice and getting used to. Uh, I'm gonna show you a couple instances in which it can trip you up, just so you guys can avoid it. If you do have too much time on the screen, you're not gonna have the mask filling up the entire screen. So you're gonna wanna make sure the mask fills up the whole screen. And if you have too much time on the screen, it's going to be too long before that beep actually is audible to the ear. It only will make that beep at the end of each buffer. So the less time you have on the screen, the more often you're gonna get that beeping noise. You can also add an action to pause it when it makes its first failure outside of the mask. Uh, but I like to just let the mask run and beep. That way, if I'm wiggling a harness and I hear the beep, I know I've kind of found where that circuit issue is and now I can tear apart a loom and try to find the broken wire from there. For more information on the Gurus program or where to find training, go ahead and check out garagegurus.tech. I'm Josh Whiteman, thanks for watching.